All right, gang, so this video is going to serve as an introduction to some of the medical applications that go along with the cardiovascular system. Uh, we are going to tackle a few of these. Um, I really got a, a couple great videos that are going to enhance this when we do a little bit more in class, but uh, give you the big overview so we'll have the information down and then we'll reinforce it in class. That's the idea. Um, the sheet that you see here is the one that you guys have, the front side. Uh, I had a little bit about like arteries and veins and things like that that goes with a different video, uh, but the backside 5 through 10 here is what we're going to really focus on and try and answer in this video. So uh, let's jump into it. So the first one's pretty simple. Uh, if you take a look at it and think about it, I think you guys will be able to do this completely on your own. Um, but we're talking about the autonomic nervous system. Remember, uh, cardiac muscles uh, completely involuntary. So it's part of that autonomic nervous system. And we have the two divisions. We've got the sympathetic and parasympathetic, right? And remember, the sympathetic is kind of our emergency. Um, and the parasympathetic is that resting uh, state. So uh, which one is running uh, things during an emotionally or stressful situation? Um, that's going to be your sympathetic um, nervous system. And what do you think happens to heart rate? Well, it's going to increase, okay? So the heart rate's going to go up, right? Um, which uh, division is running things when we are relaxed? Well, that's going to be your parasympathetic. So the parasympathetic, and you're going to see a drop in heart rate. Um, and we cover that. We cover that in one of the other videos. You may or may not have seen that video yet, but you will. Um, we actually get into the neurotransmitters and, and give you a little bit more. Uh, but remember, both of those interact on that sinoatrial node, so the SA node, which is the pacemaker, and just uh, speed up or slow down that pacemaker. So the second bit we want to focus on is this number six, and it's what's referred to as atherosclerosis, okay? Um, so if we go to this image, what you see here is the wall of an artery. So this is an artery here that's been sliced open, so you're looking down the end of it. Uh, and here's your normal epithelium, okay? And then here's the connective tissue, and then all of this in between here. So let's make it, it'll color it in blue because it's fun, okay? Everything in blue here. Um, particularly, you can see it really well on this side, all of this in blue is fat that is in the wall. It's not necessarily stuck to the wall. You do get a little fat that'll stick to the inside edge, but what happens is it sticks, it uh, really gets deposited. Remember the LDL, this is simple squamous epithelium, endothelium. Uh, so the um, so that LDL is really good at depositing fat in here. That bad cholesterol is really good at depositing fat in here. Now, that causes two big problems. This is more constricted or more narrow. And if you remember, uh, one of the raise, ways we raise our blood pressure is vasoconstriction. Um, and when we lower it is vasodilation, right? Well, this prevents the vasodilation and pretty much just puts us in a state of always vasoconstricted. So this is a big part in raising our blood pressure. Uh, and then the other thing it does is arteries are usually very stretchy. So when the heart pumps, when you feel like the pulse on your neck or your wrist, you're feeling the blood vessels swell and expand and then bounce back into place. Um, so your, your arteries absorb a lot of the force as your heart beats, okay? <clears throat> In this case, this isn't going to stretch. This fatty material isn't going to really stretch, and it's going to be very stiff. Uh, so the atherosclerosis actually refers to as like the hardening of the arteries um, because of the fat, but it also narrows them and also makes it harder for blood to get through them. All right, so atherosclerosis is that fat building up in the walls of the arteries, which narrows them and makes it let more stiff and increase your blood pressure. So that should take you take us right into question number seven, which is what is hypertension? Okay, so this is question number seven on your packet. And hypertension is just the fancy word for high blood pressure. Okay, um, now a couple things that are really interesting about high blood pressure. First of all, we've already talked about how it can destroy the glomerulus in the kidneys. So that's damaging by itself. But one of the things that I that is hard for kids to kind of wrap their mind around, um, imagine I have blood that has to flow past this blockage here, this narrowing, right? So this is more narrow than it normally is. What happens is you end up with a backup of blood. It doesn't get through there as fast. So hypertension, even though there's more pressure, the blood flows slower through the blood vessels, right? And that's a really important factor, guys. So imagine I have a hose, right? and you got the water cranked on the hose. If I squeeze down on that hose, it decreases the flow out the other end, right? You put a kink in the hose to stop it from, from water from coming out. That's kind of what these uh, fatty plaques do, is they're, they, they restrict the blood flow, okay? And when it slows down, what that means is LDL ends up flowing by here 
slower. So the slower LDL, your bad cholesterol flows by, the more fat that it can put inside the walls. Okay? So hypertension can cause atherosclerosis, and then the atherosclerosis will cause further hypertension. And when you get more hypertension, it moves even slower, which causes more fatty buildup, which results in a higher blood pressure, and they really will build and build and build, and it's this cycle that kind of builds on each other. So high blood pressure um, can lead to atherosclerosis. The atherosclerosis can lead to high blood pressure. Once you have one, you, you very quickly will develop the other, all right? So they're, they're kind of related conditions in that way. The other thing that you should know about this is when you do have hypertension and the blood's going to flow slower, even if you have pretty good cholesterol numbers, the slower it flows, the more likely you're going to develop this, okay? Uh, so even if you have a good diet, things along those lines, if you've got high blood pressure, you can ultimately end up with this um, atherosclerosis. And we're going to talk more about this because the atherosclerosis um, is really what's going to kill, you know, roughly half the people in the United States, right? All right, so the eighth question on this sheet, guys, refers to angina pectoris. So you'll see angina pectoris up here. And what that really translates into, guys, is chest pain. That's really what you're talking about, agina. Um, you'll hear about that. Um, but angina pectoris, that's chest pain, okay? And what happens in ch uh, with chest pain is you've got a, essentially, it's a cramping of the muscle because you're not getting enough blood flow to it. Anytime you starve off the blood flow, you can't make as much ATP. Remember, the actin and myosin need ATP not only for contraction, but also to relax and to pump all the calcium back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. So in this diagram on the left, this is normal blood flow. Everything's nice and clear. You're delivering lots of oxygen here. On the right-hand side, you've got spots where this is almost completely blocked by fat. That's fat. That's atherosclerosis. That's fat in there, so blood's barely squeezing by. Um, down here, look at look at how little blood flow is getting to this portion of the heart. Okay, so that portion of the heart could very easily go into a cramp, um, which would be a nice warning sign before a heart attack. A lot of people don't get those warning signs, um, but it's it's kind of a, um, a blessing when some people do because it gives you an indicator that there's some really unhealthy blood vessels, that the atherosclerosis has gotten so bad uh, that you're at really high risk for a heart attack. Okay, so angina pectoris, chest pain um, from a lack of blood flow to the heart. Okay, the only other thing I want to mention, guys, is this is what we're talking about here are the coronary arteries. So if we haven't, if you haven't seen that in one of the videos yet, that might be new to you. Um, but the blood vessels that were that are in this picture in bright red, these are all called the coronary arteries, and they feed the muscle of the heart. So just like every muscle in your body, it has to have a blood flow to it. Um, and these are called the coronary arteries. And if they get blocked, uh, that's when you have, result in um, angina pectoris or worse, a heart attack. So question nine in your sheet refers, talks about myocardial infarctions, okay? So what we're talking about here, myocardium is the heart muscle. and infarction, we're talking about the lack of blood flow to it. So now you've got a complete blockage. Um, and this is a full-blown heart attack, whereas angina pectoris is kind of like a warning sign maybe before a heart attack. Myocardial infarction is the, the technical term for a full-blown heart attack. And what's happened is this has completely blocked off and now no blood flow is getting through. So depending on where it is, it can be, you know, can kill you, and sometimes it can be really minor. So if it was a little tiny blood vessel way down at the tip, let's say um, way down here, you got a blockage, and the blood couldn't get down to this last little bit of the heart. Well, without any blood sp supply there, that part of the heart might die, um, but your heart as a whole is going to keep beating, and you probably wouldn't die. Uh, you'd have a little chunk of dead muscle in your heart. Your heart would be weaker, but you'd probably survive. Okay. Um, some, if it was up here, where that blockage happened, all of the heart from here down would essentially start starving to death, um, and you would, as a result, um, probably die from that heart attack. Um, you, you, it'd be very difficult to resume. Uh, blood flow in time to actually save that heart and be able to save you. Okay, so it's all about where it happens. Um, but what really happens is the uh, fatty plaque tends to burst open. So let me pull up a different picture here. All right, so here's that same diagram that we were talking about before, and you've got the fatty plaque that is built up in here. 
So what can happen over time is that can build and build and build, and the immune cells tend to attack it and cause inflammation as well because it's it's un, it's abnormal. We're not supposed to have that there, okay? So the immune cells will start attacking this, and what will happen, this will build and build and build, and eventually this can rupture, okay? So if that bursts open, if this inner wall bursts open, you now have epithelial here, but underneath it is the connective tissue. So let's draw in some connective tissue here. So the layer of connective tissue that's underneath now is exposed. And if you remember from when we talked about the blood, as soon as we see that, guys, your body will go into a clotting process. Um, you have a broken blood vessel, and your body doesn't really know that it shouldn't clot this one because it's going to be worse for us. What happens is it actually fills this in with a clot. It will actually start taking uh, the... The fibrinogen will turn into fibrin and will start forming a mesh web going across. The platelets will stick to that, the red blood cells, and all of a sudden this whole thing will get sealed off. Okay, So if this whole thing gets sealed off with a clot, everything on, let's say the blood's flowing towards us, everything on our side is going to start starving to death. All those cells are going to start dying. Everything on the other side, both those are going to be stopped and it's not really going to be flowing through there very well. Um, but at least there's some access to blood in that side. But if you've got a complete dam, essentially, think of it as a dam in the blood vessel, um, uh, everything on this side where we are would start starving to death. So back to the picture we were at before, you would, you would see everything on the other side of the clot would start dying. All right, so myocardial infarction, that's what we're talking about, is this has burst. The fatty plaque has burst, um, and because of that, you actually form a blood clot that stops the blood flow. All right, so the last question you guys have on there deals with uh, heart murmurs. Okay, so with a heart murmur, what we're talking about is these valves have failed in some way. So remember that this right now is a picture of the left ventricle, and when the left ventricle contracts, the blood should get squeezed out through this aortic valve, through the aorta to the whole body, right? And the reason it goes out this way is because this valve seals and prevents it from going in the other direction, okay? Now, if this valve doesn't fit properly, if, say, what we actually got over here, I'm going to draw it in blue. Let's say your valve had one of these, see these strings down here? Let's say those strings ruptured. So let's say your valve looked like this on one half, and then the other half because this string ruptured, or broke, let's say the valve swung back this far, then blood, instead of going out to your body, could slip back in this way, go in the wrong direction, all right? And every bit of blood going in that direction is not going out to your body, okay? So a heart murmur can be really minor, it can be, you know, if a tiny bit went back this way or went the wrong way through one of the valves, no doctor would bother with it. But if it's significant, if a third of the blood is going back in the wrong direction, that means your heart's gonna have to beat you know, one-third faster uh, all the time to supply oxygen. And when you start exercising, that might not be possible, right? Um, you might, uh, some heart rates go up to 100 beats a minute. you got to go up to, you know, actually they go far beyond that. But um, but you get the kind of the point there. We can have um, problems circulating blood if it's going in the wrong direction, all right? So it, dep it depends on where the faulty valve is, how much is leaking in the wrong direction. Uh, but they call it a murmur because you can actually hear the heart beats. You'll actually hear... Uh, like a gurgling sound going in the opposite direction. You have to have a really good stethoscope and you got to have some really good training and put it in, in, in the valves or in different parts. Um, but if you are uh, if you know what you're doing, you'll actually be able to catch the sound of blood essentially gurgling in the wrong direction. So it has like a murmuring sound. Um, and that's where that term comes from. All right, so the very last slide here, guys, shows a diagram that depicts the interrelationship between some of these conditions that we've been talking about. Some of them are old uh, business for us, but some of them are new, okay? So let's start, uh, let's start with hypertension, okay? And let's see what hypertension can cause. So remember, um, as you develop hypertension, it can lead to uh, atherosclerosis because the blood will flow slower. It's hard for the blood to get through those narrowed blood vessels. And because of that, the LDL has more of an opportunity to deposit the fat so the atherosclerosis can get worse. Okay. Um, you also, uh, with high blood pressure, you have a better chance of that atherosclerosis rupturing and causing a blood clot that causes a heart attack. Um, and I should have mentioned this, guys, when we talk about strokes, most strokes are the exact same thing as a heart attack. It just happens to be a blood vessel in the brain. It's fat building up in the walls. And usually that fat will burst open and cause a blood clot in the brain. So part of the brain starts to die from lack of blood flow. Right? Um, so hypertension can lead to those things. 
Atherosclerosis, we already talked about, can lead to the hypertension um, because the, the more fat there is, the more narrow the blood vessels are and the less um, flexible those blood vessels are. Okay. Uh, you also have the connection with atherosclerosis and the stroke and heart attack because it's mo most of the time, most strokes and heart attacks are when the fatty um, deposit ruptures and breaks open. All right, so you actually see that component. All right. Uh, time back in our last unit with a, with with um or two new units back when we talked about digestion. Uh, the more uh, fat that you have in your body, the more typically the more HDL. Um, uh, typically the more HDL and LDL. Sorry, that really should be LDL there. Sorry about that typo, guys. Um, the more you tend to deposit in the walls of the blood vessels. So the worse your diet is, typically the more of that. And there's a lot of genetics in there, but that's where people are really concerned about with your trans fats and saturated fats. They're taught to, they're thought to turn into more LDL, which would put more fat into the walls of the arteries. Okay. Um, when you have, when a person has diabetes, okay, uh, their blood glucose swings, remember a lot of that becomes fat. So you end up with a contributing factor to obesity. And when you have, when a person has a BMI um, that is uh, high, when somebody's got a high percentage of body fat, they're more likely to develop diabetes. So these two things can kind of cause each other as well. Okay, So it's a big picture. Um, and remember, the reason we're focusing on this is this is roughly half the deaths in the U.S., guys. So um, so when we start talking about this, it's kind of really important to keep an eye on all of these pieces. High blood pressure uh, can be awful. The atherosclerosis is the fat building up in there, and all of that kind of linked together. All right. So um, hopefully that hammers things through. I'm, I'm going to show you a couple of videos to really reinforce this because I've got a couple of cool ones that uh, really help you visualize the pieces. But hopefully that works pretty well for you. Have a good night, guys. See you in class.